limited edition. I'm Dr. Kingori. Our focus on the show tonight is debt. Madeni, or the other definition of January. Now, <laughs> de debt can be so uncomfortable that most people will do the un unimaginable just to be free of debt. That's why we have such cases as someone giving away his wife to settle a 900 shilling debt. I was going to pay my mother. 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 I was now, th this is a very twisted understanding of debt, uh, twisted understanding of dating, like giving away your wife to settle a debt. Dating. <laughs> Doesn't even sound right. First of all, this makes it sound wrong to owe someone money if you are married and they are single. And actually, the list of things you can or can't do when you have a debt just got an addition. You see, vile ukiwa na deni ya mtu, awezi kula nyama in peace. Hawezi nunuwa nguompia na ukinunuwa lazima u explain. And now hawezi kuwa na bibi kama uko na deni. How do you even uh, deal with in-laws in dowry negotiations after watching such a story? Ati huyu mstana wetu kama hauna ngombe 50, you go dry. <laughs> really? Really? Kama huyu ni miatisa. Really? See? This stands to be the highest interest rate ever charged on a single debt. <laughs> Look, looking at this, would you imagine ukiwa na elfu mbili kwa mfuko, you are working with two wives? <laughs> yes, I, 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 <laughs> only, only a Shylock can devalue a human being like that. And see, because when it comes to Shylocks, the deal is always too good, and they also don't help in thinking twice. A Shylock who didn't want to be identified told NTV the pressure to conform is always the downfall of many athletes who end up losing their cars or properties after failing to pay up in good time. Some even anticipate winning races to pay back money owed to the Shylocks, and when they fail, things get ugly. See, you go to a Shylock, you borrow money in the hope that you will pay back if you win. If you don't, you run with the Shylock's money. After all, that's in line with what you do for a living. You are a runner. Until, until it hits you that the Shylock's business is when you don't pay up. When you default, they lose the 60,000 shillings you borrowed, but at least they get to keep that car you bought at one million. Yes, simple mathematics. See, most creditors and bad Christians have one thing in common. They start all humble, then they lose the fruits of the Holy Spirit one by one. They start with faith followed by patience. Faith because they don't believe you can pay them back, and patience because even if they believe you can pay them back, it's now or never, especially landlords. <laughs> Police in Shabab area of Nakuru County were forced to break into this home when they got information that two girls had been locked in here for the last one month following a dispute over rent. You know, you know things are bad when you see police officers using excessive force and no one is complaining. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not miss the point here, though. The guardian of the two has allegedly been ensuring they did not miss their meals by passing food to them through the window. Residents were astounded by the action taken by the landlord and agents, while others defended the girl's guardian. See, the girl's guardian had to bring the children food through the window. So if the landlord really wanted to punish them, he should have just put up, put up a notice, no food from outside. <laughs> yes, simple. See, and if you thought, and if you thought the Nakuru landlord was petty, see how petty people get even at the thought of a debt. According to Christopher Simiu, the argument arose after he allegedly paid for his meal, but the owner of the eating joint insisted that he had not. Wakati alikula mtura ya teni bobu, wakapeana mbao. Wisho mama akachukua supu ya mtura, akamuakia, kwa kifua, akachomeka. You see how even a small amount of money can land you in hot soup? <laughs> oh, all this drama was caused by 10 shillings, and we still talk about the shilling is weak. <laughs> on the flip side, on the flip side, the amount of soup the Kibanda owner needed to uh, pour on uh, this client must have been more than 10 shillings. 
she probably spent soup worth more than 200 shillings just to recover 10 shillings. Now, this is a classic scenario of uh, responding to a mosquito bite with a hammer. <laughs> mosquito imepanda kwa maguti yako. You don't even move. Unaitisha nyundo ikiwa hapo ndio isiende. Unainyorosha. There is no doubt mosquito imeenda. But guess who doesn't have kneecaps? <laughs> mosquito imeenda na kifuniko ya maguti. This reminds me of uh, when the Kisumu County government paid 3.5 million shillings to an audit firm to help recover 3 million shillings they had lost. So basically, the 3 million shillings uh, attracted a further use of 3.5 million shillings. So that's 6.5 million shillings in total. That's a prof very profitable loss. Like Asara imekuja na profit. <laughs> Come to think of it. See, uh, okay, to put this into perspective, they literally responded to a mosquito bite with a hammer. Now, for me, for, for me, what stands out in all this is that when it comes to Kenyans, you can uh, play with their money in millions, like NYS, Eurobond, Afia House Cash, that you can get away with, but try defrauding someone of a cup of soup. That's when you'll know that getting souped can't be worse than getting sued. <laughs> yes, and as it turns out, debt is more common than you think. If you thought you're debt free, I've got news for you. The public debt that our government has is very big that every Kenyan has a debt responsibility of 86,000 shillings, including the unborn. So as the saying goes, the debtful ones have not yet been born. <laughs> interestingly, interestingly, over 60% of uh, the public debt is domestic. The Nairobi City County government has uh, threatened uh, to clamp down uh, some of the assets belonging to the national government's building in a bid to compel it to pay out outstanding debts cumulatively valued at 66.5 billion shillings. Let me break that down for you. Your dad owes you some money, like a thousand bob. So you threaten to lock down the kitchen because you know he must eat. <laughs> No, no, no. Kitchen, kitchen is not a good example. You decide, you decide to lock the bedroom. So, okay. Una, una mtisha, una, una, no, no, don't think about that. Una mtisha, utamnyanganya viatu kama hata lipa. Thou shall not do that. Same way, the county government is part of the government. How do you owe yourself money? Ati mazeni kona deni yangu ya 3K mazeni. Do you know how difficult that is? How do you even hide from yourself if you can't pay you back? <laughs> and then there's this. Of the 66.5 billion shillings that Nairobi City County alleges is owed to it by the national government, 60.2 billion shillings is owed by one ministry alone in land rates, the Ministry of Defense. The Kenya Broadcasting Corporation is second on the list in terms of the amount of debt owed at 2.2 billion shillings. The Kenya Cultural Center is third in rank with a debt of 1.1 billion shillings. I find this interesting because uh, it looks like the Kenya Cultural Center, that's, uh, that's the, the institution that holds the Kenya National Theater, owes more than they are worth. <laughs> to mean, yes, to mean if you sold the entire premises, you didn't even raise that money unless you sell it to the people inside. <laughs> but then again, how many people will you need to be inside during the sale if this one costs 900 shillings? <laughs> yes, debt just, has a way, debt just has a way of outgrowing itself. And the most common reference uh, is to this is the 6 million shilling debt borrowed by the Gashoka family, which later grew to 200 million shillings. The loan was borrowed in 1979. And talking of a growing debt, believe it or not, she was also born around that time. <laughs> in the case of the Gashoka family, in the case of the Gashoka family, though, according to the Daily Nation, an article by the Daily Nation, the bank uh, had been increasing loan interest to more than three times its original rate to an exorbitant 49% without informing the borrower, thanks to a malicious clause that gave the lender powers to do so at its discretion. This doesn't come at a shock, as a shock to me, though. Makangas do that all the time. These ones are the kingpins of hidden charges. You boda matatu, you meskia, bao bao. Ukilipa, unapeana 20 bao. Unapeana, hey, buda, gari ni 40. Nilisema mbao marangapi. <laughs> Unanguka esabu. Unanguka esabu. Unanguka esabu bila matiangi, basically. Thanks to the government, though, through the capping of interest rates, uh, consumers uh, in the banking sector are now protected from such. But still, borrowing needs a strategy. You should never borrow what you cannot repay. There are many people who borrow from their friends, and that is the last time their friends will see them. 
you get nice girls coming saying, please lend me some money. That is the last time you see this particular lady. So the best thing is to give the money and say, I give it to you, it's not a loan. And ask them, how are you spending your own money? In your domestic budgetary income, you must create a portion for saving and a portion for your own luxury spend. That's a very familiar story and very great counsel from businessman Chris Kirubi. But did you guys see what I saw in that clip, Mali? You must create a portion for saving. <laughs> yes. Now, uh, <clears throat> we'll be right back with Chris Kirubi after the break. Atuambie nani huyu alikuwa nataka kumuomba pesa. Welcome back to the weekend edition. I'm Dr. Kingori. Our subject tonight is debt. And you can get in touch with us on our social media handles at Dr. Underscore Kingori and at NTV Kenya. Our guest on the show tonight is one of the richest men in the country. He's the richest DJ. He's a blogger, new face. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Kirubi, man. Thank you. Yeah. I'll, I'll go straight mm. to the point. I'll just, yeah. with the question, I know it's a burning question from everyone at Amanyana, watch at home. When oh. was the last time you felt the pains of January? <laughs> <laughs> I only feel the pain of January by December because I have to give my workers lots of bonuses, lots of advances. <laughs> Otherwise, yes. for me, a partner. <laughs> Everyone must be so jealous of you because uh, you've written about uh, how people end up in debt in January. Right? Yes. Kusota, kusota kabisa. Yeah. Well, it's about the money you spend. So it means you have something to spend in January. January blue. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, we all spend more than we earn and we end up in trouble. What you earn, you must put a saving for rainy days for doing something better. If you have an expensive girlfriend, <laughs> tell her goodbye, look for a cheaper one. Yeah. How, 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 you need fitina, you. You need kelele a fitina. Yes, see, how, how do you get you to see fitina point? at a girlfriend, a kiwa na, a boyfriend who is a pauper, Leave him. <laughs> Go. Look for a better one. <laughs> How do you know that it's time that you can buy a car now? You know, it depends. When you have no money, you have little salary. You calculate how much can I put away to save for a car. You don't buy the car first and start saving. Okay. Yeah, very little. Okay? Yes, yes, yes. You save, and when you have enough, you go and buy one Mutumba car, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Then you continue saving, and you sell your Mutumba, you buy a little better car. That way you can grow. But you know, when you want to start working, and you want to buy a BMW, because the girls will like you. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's because you've said that if someone has a girlfriend and you're cheap, they should leave you. <laughs> so you need to do something about that. But empty pockets are worse than those. <laughs> <laughs> than those, you know, when you're empty pockets, you have debts. It's worse than a guy with no debts and has nothing. You're breaking so many hearts out here. Ukisema, hmm. hakuna shortcut ya kununua gari. Hakuna. Without. Unless you sell your wife that I saw here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that guy, that guy just devalued yeah. wives. That a loser would be like a 900, so you can't. No, no, no. If she's beautiful, you can bargain for a better price. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. I, I'm sure there's somebody who read The Mayor of Custer Bridge. Yeah. There was a book called Mayor of Custer Bridge I read one time. Okay. This guy, they were so poor, he sold his wife for a bag of food. But eventually money. he became a mayor and he went back after the many years wife. and they bought his wife back. <laughs> and that nobody knew that it was his wife. They didn't know the story. And that guy was so rich, every woman wanted him. Okay. But he went back for that old woman. 
So when he married her, yeah. the women went talking. They said, oh my, did you see our mayor? He waited so long for so little. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if, if you want to convince your wife to sell her, go buy that book. Yeah. <laughs> it will work for you. It's worked yeah. before. Yeah. You, yeah. You, you, had a very, you, you wrote about something very, very, very educative yeah. about how to plan for December holidays because that's how people yes. end up in debt in January. How, how do they, uh, how do they uh, avoid how making do they the same avoid mistake? That? You know, if you want to go for Christmas to Mombasa yes. <clears throat> at the end of the year. You start planning in January. Yes. Okay. You start saving. If you want to take a girl with you <laughs> and you know she's permanent near you, they are never permanent, but if she is. <laughs> <laughs> you ask her also to start saving. Yes. Because, because these days, if a girl is working and you are working, she should not be looking at you. Eh? Everywhere you go, she stands back. Mudos, babe. In Sweden, yes. girls will not let you buy them a drink. You produce your money for your glass of beer, they produce theirs. That's the problem. We right. are not colonized by Sweden. We could have, <laughs> we have had such. such. We, we are colonized by exploitation. Okay. You should not exploit one another. Has someone ever run away with your money? Oh, many. Debt is the bigger generator of separation between you and your friends. Okay. Just don't lend okay. to friends. Take them to the bank and say, please borrow from my bank. <laughs> that's that's another, another tip from right? someone who was actually listed as the top 40, among the top 40 richest men in Africa way back in 2011. So what you pick from that is, if you want to break up with someone, lend them money. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> because why are they borrowing? Do they have a plan how to pay you back? Yes. You should ask them, do you have a plan how you're paying me the, back this money? How did you get into this debt? If they have no plan, okay. just contribute if they're in danger, if they're in trouble. Give them donation because you can keep a friend. The government <coughs> owes the county government 66 billion or more, so they say, they report. What do you make of that? The government is not following advice from you. Know, <laughs> you, 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 you know these counties, yes. they are government babies. <laughs> they are fed by the same government. They say government owes them money. If government doesn't give them money, they cannot pay their workers. Okay. So when they take a property that government never paid rates for many, many years okay. and call it a debt and is their debt, they were not even there when that debt was accumulated. <laughs> How are they counting that it is a debt? Okay. Two, when they get that money, what do they do? They plan trips to go and see how Chinese eat. <laughs> so they, <laughs> they can come and teach their people. Uh, Which okay. county have you ever seen those commissioners come back and teach their people anything? One okay. thing, okay. have they ever written a document for anybody to learn from? Okay. But how many trips have they all made? Many. Many. I grew up thinking, if you take one shilling from a thousand bob, it is no longer a thousand bob. Right? Yeah. But it's enough to get away. Now, <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how do you, how, how, how? How much money have you got in your pocket? In my pocket? Yeah. Uh, I don't do carry you, money do on set. Oh, I don't carry money on set. Okay, okay, you are forgiven. <laughs> how, how many of you have ten thousand bob in your pocket? <laughs> they are pocket money. When you walk in the street, something could happen to you. <laughs> See. You don't. <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's a, that's I, I can produce if he allows uh, how, how, how much money do you have in your pocket? I don't know. Let me, do I have? <laughs> security. <laughs> security, security. <laughs> Africans are not born to be poor. 
we have the same opportunity like the Japanese, the French, the British, the Americans. It's only we don't use our talents. We don't think hard enough. We got to work hard. And don't say there are no opportunities. You create your own opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's free advice from one of the richest men in the country. Chris Kirubi, thank you very much for coming on our show. I'm happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was Chris Kirubi, ladies and gentlemen, giving you free advice. Free. Yes, 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 yes. And we've been talking about debt. Uh, that has been our focus tonight. And there is one debt that we've not mentioned at all. It's the most popular. A promise is a debt. <laughs> yes, a promise is a debt. And uh, there's one that we really need to follow through, follow up as Kenyans, first of all. We've been promised peace in these coming elections. That's a debt that these politicians have to pay this year. You need any to Amani Aje? Thank you very much. That's it for the weekend edition tonight. See you next week. I am Dr. Kimori. <laughs>